What's going on, guys? J Bomb, Mr. Clute, How's Fellas it going? and Stones, podcast number two. Who some... would have thought? I know, we made it this far. <laughs> it's, it's a milestone, I think. It is. <laughs> we didn't quit after the first time we did it. Even though we got 100 views, we're still going to keep going. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, it's actually I'm more than I thought. Yeah, it's more than I thought. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to go over. Um, in business and in the TCG world, I guess, would you say? I mean, I'd say that they overlap pretty good, I think. The, yeah. I mean, we're just going to get the elephant in the room out of the way. So, Hasbro. What Hasbro? I feel like they just lost half their staff. Are they even a company? Like, How I mean, does that even happen? They got a lot of employees, but no matter how you splice it, what was it, like 1,200? 1,100, 1,200 people. Probably more. That's insane. It's absolutely... Is that a quarter of their company? No. No, I don't even think close. Well, like... I mean, tasbro has got to have thousands. Of, thousands. But the thing is... Thousands and thousands, but I don't know, like, what what is there, like, 10,000, and they lost 10% of their company? Yeah, I mean, it's a percentage. It's definitely not, like, 0.01%. <laughs> it's, it's a it's percentage. Def- and it's so crazy. Um, I think Rudy does a good job. Hey, he's hey, he's on top of it. those things, which I'm um, happy about, because I get to learn more, which is cool. But I think him, the the thing that bothers me, and I get it's not like cash, but just knowing that like Cynthia Williams or whatever her name is, she, $6 million a year. And, and yeah, most of it's in like stock options, but still, you're committing that much to somebody and then you fire like, you know, That million people. could have paid almost a thousand of those people that got fired. Six million? Yeah. You could have paid a good solid chunk of those people, if not like most of them. And this chick has ruined Hasbro in the long run so far with magic and everything else. But God forbid they get rid of her. But they're paying her six million dollars. Or, you know, God forbid that Chris Cox get you know, Chris Cox gets a slap <laughs> on his wrist. You know, Chris Cox gets a slap <laughs> on his wrist. I said Cox. C O X. Cox. But honestly, he is. <laughs> he, he, is. he is. And I know it's like an old joke, but I mean with a name like that. But you have these people who are just making buku dollars, and then you get the average Joe. Even though it is half of it is probably stock options, it's still ridiculous. It when just seems lay like, well, why are people. they getting the stock options if they're in a position where they have to lay off a thousand employees? That just tells me if you have to lay off a thousand employees like that, you're not doing your job. No. And no. Wizards, I think, put up solid, like, good numbers even last they, year they, into they this always, year. They always do. But the thing is, is. Obviously, something happened where they're like, this is a concern. They're not just yeah. going to fire 1,100 people just to like, oh, we don't need these people at all. That's a, that's a lot of freaking people. You know, if it was like 10 people, like middle management, I would say, you know, AI probably got rid of them. Maybe a couple upper, higher. They could have fired a couple higher ups. Or they would have been better off. That had been ruining the game. Yeah. Or or these people were willing to take a salary cut to, to make the adjustments needed to make the, the, the yes. company in a better position. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like. You shouldn't keep your exact salary if you've underperformed. And underperforming to me is the need to lay off a thousand people. Yeah. And I think the a overprinting. Thousand percent. I think the overprinting caught up with them. I think they spent probably too much money. I want to know. It was a three-year span where they were royally effing up. Yes. Set after and set. And like Rudy always says, they're so big that it takes time for that to catch up. Yeah. So now it's catching up. But like if you. I want to know how many boxes of product from all the sets in the last, like, let's just say last year. Yep. I want to know how much of it they haven't sold. There's probably warehouses that they're or like buying distributors 30 years from now. haven't sold because if Watsy's stuck with it, that's one thing. But if like distributors are stuck with it, let me tell you this right now. I went on Amazon and the the Dominator United collector boxes are still going for one twenty one. Which is telling you that they have a ton yes. of those Legends yeah. boxes. For me, the, which is sort, unbelievable. the sign that there's not an infinite supply of something is that it goes up. I don't know if that's crazy. It sounds pretty reasonable to me. Yeah, I think so. Um, to me, exactly. $120 box price for over a year. Mm-hmm. What, that tells me that either no one cares about now. it. It's almost either, two years. Either nobody cares about it, it's not desirable, or number two, there's so much of it. And you can go on TCG Player and see the recent sales. Like there are people buying this stuff, but there's no shortage of it. No. So I want to know how much they have because that probably factored in to their decision to get rid of people. Yes. Yeah. They're like, holy cow, we got like 
two how many people do they it. need to print? Oh, they probably needed a ton of people to print that much product the in thing, the first place. All those people weren't from Watsi. No, they're not. But Watsi is debatably their largest employer for those well, people. Yeah, the largest IP, I think, standalone for the most part, the largest cash cow that Hasbro has because it's literally printing money. You're, you're, you're printing cards. On, on cardboard and to paper. me, that's the other thing. Like, you had to grossly mess up. Because you're not like a new card game establishing no. a a you know foothold. You're not you're you you are you are the established card game. You are what people look up to. And you have the recipe for almost thirty years now to literally print money. So either you you it's must not, have, it's not just a saying to you guys. It's actually what you do. That, that's literally exactly. <laughs> you print so you money. have to have had print so much of this cardboard money. That it just like like inflation, like it's Venezuela, it's reminding me of Trump like, and Biden giving out all that money. You're pretty much doing that. Yeah, it's the same thing for magic. Exactly, it's the same thing. It's it's that's why I just said it. it's like Venezuela. They just kept printing money, and now it's worth nothing. And so yeah, you had a money machine, but if you don't ever turn it off, it becomes let like worth less. Yeah. So if they they have to have a crazy stockpile of magic. That's just, and, it, uh, and, how many warehouses? And what's messed up about that is all these sets, for the most part, still perform well, and oh, yeah. like they're they're meeting like they're doing good sales, but it's not enough sales because they printed too much. So your good, your well performing products are doing good, but, just but not they're not the doing good because it's in a, it's an unattainable scale. Which like. It is not COVID anymore. People aren't locked in their houses with yep. crypto money and all this stuff, and they're just so bored they'll buy anything. Like, that era is over. And there's more card games now that people yeah. are more interested in than Magic because they've effed up for, like I said, two to three years and hurt their credibility when it comes to collector pieces, which I think is the best way to put it. Their credibility I, for collectors has gone down so far once they reprinted or started 100%. doing the full artworks on every set. Ultimate Masters had the cool, full art. Uh, what was it? The uh, the booster, like the extra pack they had in Ultimate oh, yeah. Masters. Yeah, full art. And then after that, they reprinted full arts and collector boxes, and then every other. There's two things that. to me that marked this downtrend, and neither of them I think were clear at the time. The introduction of master sets, yep. I think, really screwed things up. Yeah, as cool as they were when they were new and like completely like mysterious, like oh wow, it's super expensive. It made them set. think they could keep on reprinting the, the same. Because to opine on that first, that first one, the the master sets were so much more money than a standard set. Mm -hmm. So you and that wasn't done before. So it, it felt like holy, like I forget what the first like it was like two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. It was just masters, I think. And twenty fourteen masters. Yeah, but how much did you pay for that? I think it was about two hundred dollars. Yeah, whatever. which back was then. unheard of. Yeah, because normal you boxes were eighty nine dollars. Like, you felt like you were getting something special and premium because you paid that much for it back yep. then. Now you don't. Oh, now it's just oh, double masters is two fifty, like no big deal. <laughs> but like back then, that was a big deal, and it felt premium. Felt, but that's number one. That was downtrend number felt one. Felt good. Number two. As we said in the last podcast, but universes beyond. So literally, Ikoria, and we said good things about Ikoria, but that was the moment. Those two things were the moments that I think really long term changed magic. Change magic. Yeah. And then, did Secret Lair come out after or before Ikoria? I think it was right at the same. I think we'll it was say, right at the same we'll time. Say within the same time. Frame, I say six within months, the, yeah, within the months. same five six months. Yeah, because yeah, sure. COVID so also made them. That was things. another thing. That I think further polluted the game. Yeah, and then greatly more than we probably even realized. The I'm other honest. big thing is arena, and Which in the, in hindsight looks awesome. Arena is like great to be able to play online, but see, but the way they do it is horrible. Arena, horrible. I think really motivated the game piece because people who play arena but don't have the cards. They see them as game pieces. Yes, they mythics don't, don't have values like that. Yes, you they just don't, have to they're, get the mythic card, and that's the mythic you and get. And Magic Arena got people to play who weren't playing Magic because they didn't want to buy cards or something mm -hmm. like that. So they feel no financial attachment to the online versions of the yeah. cards. And it's not like Magic Online, where those cards cost money. Oh, they, they, those you aren't know, game pieces. Black Lotus is worth thousands of dollars on Magic Online. Because it's a digital version of of the card game. Magic Arena is basically, yeah, you pay for packs, yeah, you pay to play, 
you know, like draft and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But a- outside of that, you're you don't have financial value because you can't trade the cards. You can't do anything with them. So these people, then those are the people who are saying, "I don't want collectible cards. I want game pieces." And I mean, we were talking about it before we started this. A card game cannot have just game pieces. No. And people think it is. They hope they want it to be people like that. People think it, it needs to be like that. Not but it happen. can't be. No. And that's, I think, why you add all these things together. And like you said, over a three-year period, this wasn't something that happened overnight. No. And then you added just distasteful things. Love Sack. Yeah. Hot Pockets. Uh, Magic 30. Like, <laughs> the, like you add... So you make poor decisions for three to five years in in what felt like at the time like a good effort like universes beyond felt and sounded good when they talked about it secret layer sounded cool and special when they talked but about it but who's asking up who who was asking where for is, that where is richard garfield the backbone that could be like you guys this is a card game remember it, it's like see there's a balance and i like richard garfield but my my and i might get some flack for this but he envisioned the game as something you play in between Dungeons yeah. and Dragons match, like games yeah. or waiting or, you know, just, you know, 15 year and kill like, like 50, 20 minute game for him. The game is like meant to just be more fun. It was super casual. And I think the game outgrew his vision. Yeah. But then I think I Watsi, you. after being acquired, see Watsi as prime, in my opinion, was when Richard Garfield left, but before they were acquired by Hasbro. That, that, in, that in between as prime. I mean, they're killing it with Pokemon. They're killing it with magic. They had solid quality cards. And then those were the good times. And man. then, you know, Hasbro comes along and they're like, all right, you guys aren't doing great. You're not great. I mean, the game is like, it was losing popularity. It, it was. The, I forget when they acquired them, but they, you know, it wasn't as popular as it was. And, you know, we're going to acquire you. We're going to give you cash injection. Mm-hmm. You guys can focus on the game, do all this big crazy stuff. We'll fund it. You know, that's how it works. And that worked for a little bit. Because they had probably more control than they do now, of course. That's yeah, because that's, like. that's how those things always start off. Hasbro probably didn't expect them to make that much money for them. No. Probably. No. And <laughs> you also think about it. Think about it like this. In the early 2000s, when you were a kid, you had a lot of toys. Yeah. Do kids nowadays have a lot of toys? Like, yeah, like little kids buy toys. Little, little as soon kids. as you get an iPad, as soon as you get a cell phone, no as soon as toys. you get a computer, you don't really care for toys. Yeah. So, and there are cooler toys now. You know, way Nerf cool. guns and way, way cooler, cooler toys. toys. But kids are definitely buying less of them. Mm. You know, I had, a, I had a toy chest. That had hundreds of toys yeah. that were just fucking piled to the top. You know, action figures, you know, whatever. Dumb little... Yeah. Whatever. But I just don't feel like kids have that. So Hasbro early mid 2000s was making probably a lot more money off of toys yeah holiday season toys tickle me elmos and things like that and now they're not so that enabled i think watsi to become their biggest cash cow yeah because now magic is a toys for adults pretty much i mean even in the 90s magic was geared towards teenagers and adults yeah and then pokemon's like let's do that but for kids but for kids and then still attracted adults, so it's just win-win. But so Magic at its core has always been geared towards the older crowd, because it's just an eight-year-old's just not going to play Magic. I mean, they might, but, you know. It, but see, you're more likely to have that now with kids and their with with, with parents and their kids. Yeah, hundred like, percent. You know, if I had a kid, I and, you know, they were a little nerdy. I would want to get them into Magic. You yeah, know? it's fun, and unfortunately, it guarantees they'll be poor forever. But <laughs> yes, well, we're not talking about that. But things, you know? it's a lifelong addiction because that's the thing. <laughs> see. We have all this negative stuff to say about the game, but we keep talking about it. Because we love because it. it's something that's important. I've grown yeah. up with it, and it's been, and it sucks. It's part of our lives. It sucks to see these kinds of things happening. And then at the same time, I just hold out hope that it's going to get better. Yeah. And for me, I think, honestly, the only way that magic survives... I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to make a controversial statement okay. that I think the only way Magic survives is if they get sold. And if Watsy gets sold. You say someone buys Watsy yeah. from Hasbro. I just don't think that the people at the top of Hasbro and Watsy are capable of making good long-term decisions. Absolutely not. They don't care. They want their stock options, do it for 5, 10 years, cash out. If she cashed out of her $6 million stock options right now, it would tank Hasbro stock. 
Yeah, it definitely would because has you know how many shares been, that is? It goes I mean, maybe not tank, but it would do it would do it. And she has more than six million, and she, that's what she got that year. So all collectively, she might have 20, 30 million in Hasbro stock. So if she were to liquidate that, that would severely hurt Watsi. But she has no vested interest. She's just got to maintain a status quo. They just overprinted everything, made bad decisions for three years. They should all have and to then play, laid off a thousand. They people. should all have to play Magic the Gathering if they're going to work for it. She I feel like a, that should be a thing that needs to be done. If you're going to take over know. a game or work for a game, you should know how to play the game, yeah. even if you're the janitor. Dude, that's I want a, no. you to know no. the card game. That's a meme, and you're stupid because you're like, no, you're you, no, you are stupid for suggesting that because she went out and couldn't even define Magic. On a fireside chat. She had to read it off of Wikipedia. So if you hold out hope that they would think... Like, that's what I mean. That's why I said you're dumb. If anybody if anybody actually believes that these people are going to make long-term decisions and change their way of thinking... Like, even Rudy, I disagree with him. He's like... And I, he said... He said that, you know, it's somewhat positive that they're making, like, shortening the print runs. Like, they're making these changes. Mm -hmm. And... I feel the same way as he does. I'm just hopeful. I am hopeful that these changes will take. But what have these guys at the top done for the last five years that would suggest that they're actually going to change? Nothing. 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 And, and now, instead of the taking... The play booster is the closest thing. Instead of taking... The closest thing, I think. Accountability. Instead of taking less stock options. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking lowering your salary. Instead of... Instead of being grilled as you should and just and just accepting and coming out and saying, you know what, we have really sucked. What do they do? They fire a thousand people. <laughs> like I don't mean to laugh, but that is just no. It's it, it's it's real. Not funny because those are, that's people's lives. Yeah. But it's also it is funny in the sense that you expect a different result, or they. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they think like let's just. I don't. I think that they're actually. I'm not as I don't want to be as pessimistic as it sounds. I think that they do try to make decisions that they mm -hmm. think are correct, but I think they are just incapable of do, of they're making them. They're blinded. It's, and, it's and just the blind. They're and just, that's what's hard. What is it? The blind leading the, the blind. Death leading the blind. The and death I, leading the blind. The blind leading the death. When you have she she came to Watsi with experience from like Amazon and I, I think like a cigarette company or something. Like she was it, she was a high end executive of selling a. Of, yeah, she has no business, business being in this game. But she makes money for people. She does in the short term. Because what she did is she applied her logic from Amazon and her logic from whatever other company she worked at. And she said, this worked for pushing Amazon products. This worked for selling cigarettes or whatever she did before yeah. that. This worked for this and that. So, she, of course, she's going to come into Watsi and expect to do the same thing. She doesn't know the ins and outs. She sees product. She doesn't understand she the fundamentals of collectibles. It's not just a game. It's collectibles, and there's this balance that needs to exist, and they can't see that. Because, I mean, like you said, she's not a magic player. If you never, yeah, I guess if you've never had a type of hobby like that, you're not going to really understand how that goes. Which like, is kind of, which is lame that they hired somebody in that position. Like, do you think Chris Cox <sighs> can name ten cards? No. From any of the last ten sets? No. Not at all. I, I don't think so. No. I don't think Cynthia Williams even knows the names of of the last ten, five of the last four of the last 10 sets and i like, don't think she could tell you what the names of the lands were no i she might not know what a land is dude if she's reading the definition of the game from off wikipedia, of wikipedia which wikipedia always got faith in wikipedia yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> you know so that's probably the smartest thing she did was read it off of wikipedia but <laughs> yeah it, it's just it just uh -oh. adds it adds insult to injury because yeah. Wikipedia is not even a citable source, technically. Technically, but we yeah. know, yeah, exactly. You know, if you were in college, you would not be allowed to use oh, no, Wikipedia. No, 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 no. So she shouldn't be allowed to define a product from her own company using Wikipedia. And like, yeah, people, YouTubers, I get like this is a couple months old or almost, a, I guess, a year old at this point. Oh, at the fireside chat. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's crazy. A little bit over fast, a year now. It's crazy how fast time goes. But I know a lot of people talked about it, but I don't think it was talked about enough. I don't think it was like truly sunk in enough and then now when you have a thousand people fired from the company as a whole related where to... they could have fired her after that fireside chat they should and have. the company probably would have been fine that would have, and brought someone in yeah no that's what they would have hired somebody else probably for cheaper and somebody who actually likes the game 
on it, and you know, I said that magic outgrew Richard Garfield's vision. Honestly, firing her, digging him out of the grave, and giving him whatever he wanted for a year or two to at least at least put the vision and back on track. Intermediate, like just at least at least trying to ideas. Yeah, because the dude makes good games. He knows how to make games. And game creator. There, there's just, there's hundreds of people who could have filled her position. I mean, like there's there's a lot of people who would yeah. have at least known about the game. I mean, I genuinely think like they just assumed her business acumen which would is carry her, which is ridiculous. And it will see. Here's the thing, though. It would in any other product. She's selling shampoo, she's selling soap, I selling guess right. coffee mugs. You know, pushing product the way that she does. Or, you, I, yeah. you know, I think that that works anywhere besides a collectible. I think a collectible is, like, the one thing. And it's, like, the, the lore behind it and the cards are so different. It's, like, and you can't just push it. But one set, one one magic thing isn't just one product. It's a bunch of different cards that create all one, connect in one product. product. And that's the other thing. If to keep on making them and keep on making new ideas without time for the marinate, it's going to be rushed and that's just going to be you're working bad taste you're working and pushing something that means a lot to people a lot that people grew for over up 30 with, years that people have just grown up with so don't, don't be kathy what is it from disney world <laughs> don't be kathy what is her um, a kennedy kathy kennedy <laughs> she ruined star wars people love star wars for how long 30 40 plus years when it came out and then they came out with the new shit yeah and it all went downhill and then, you know, you get a taste of something, you know, put a chick in it, make her gay. You know, <laughs> which Dude. is just, you know, you get a taste of that and you're like, holy cow, that must have been the reason why everyone wants to go see this movie. That means every other movie now needs to have a chick in it who's gay or a, a person of color just, just arbitrarily because. And then it turns out that that doesn't necessarily guarantee you a good movie. Mm -hmm. And when you mess with something, it's one thing. When you make a new IP, you know, it's own standalone thing. It's one thing if you do that. Like, you know, you take like something like the Umbrella Academy. Like yep. all those people, the hodgepodge of all the different cultures I in that show. That, quite a bit. that show, it works because it was just part of the show. It and felt it, and natural. It a, and it was a it was a written book, a written comic. But you take you take Snow White and have her played by, you know, I hate to say like someone who's a not Latino. Yeah. It, it, there's nothing wrong with the fact that she's Latino. It's just she doesn't fit the person. No, no. You like like you seen, you've seen the memes, fit. like you wouldn't have like uh, Kevin Costner play like uh, Obama or something like no. that. No. It just wouldn't it just wouldn't Would you have Keanu make sense. like yeah, would you have Keanu Reeves play, play Malcolm X? No, yeah. I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Or 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 something like that. It would be just seen as just weird. I, I wouldn't no. So you apply that to, to, to magic, it's the same thing. It's just they they think they have this formula figured out and they just exploit it. And then only when it totally backfires on them do they consider changing. You know, no one in the room is like, you know what? <laughs> this isn't going to work forever and we should have a long-term plan. Fire him. You're one of the 1,000. Like, that's – and I just – I don't know. And when you combine it – see, back in the day, Wizards could mess up. Your only competition yeah. was Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic. You didn't now have, you, didn't have you have all much. this competition now. Oh, so when Lord you mess Kana, up, One Piece, so sorcery. It's when you mess flesh up, blood, it's, people it's, leave. It's insane. Because there is a place to go. Before it's like, where are you going to go? <laughs> what game are you going to play now? Twist their nipples and like, oh, where are you going? <laughs> you ain't going anywhere. You ain't doing anything. You're standing right here. You're going to buy this set and be miserable. But now there's flesh and blood. There's sorcery. Lorcana, One Piece, all these games now that you can engage in. Jesse, you hear that? It's the sound of the sub subscribe button, so make sure to click it to shut it up. Let's get that back to it. That, that was, I, I thought, like, I was like, you know, is there, like, a sound in here? Like, is there a spider on me? Like, what is happening? That was pretty good. I thought that'd like, be fun. Man, I would have subscribed. <laughs> um, so then. All the new card games. To put a bow on it, there's going to be the side of me that stays hopeful. That, you know, I'm wrong. Yeah. I, I, I really do. I mean, I, I, I don't want to walk around thinking that I'm right all the time. but and I, and I hope that I'm wrong. But based on what I've seen with the current management at WotC and Hasbro, they're incapable of making long-term decisions that are sustainable for a card game. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way out of that is that WotC gets sold off. Yeah. And or someone takes over and, or, the, or Hasbro in general is bought out. Or, or there's a fund, at the very least, there's a fundamental restructuring. Mm -hmm. 
where they say, we're not going to sell this IP, we're not going to sell WotC, but we're, we're, we're not going to rely on WotC to make as much money and be our main nut. Yeah. But that's the other thing. That's in business. That's not easy to do. Yeah. Like, that's your revenue stream. And if your other revenue streams are down because kids aren't buying toys and things like that, then it's hard to to be okay with something like that. So they're in a tough spot. And I, I, I don't think it's going – I don't think getting rid of the draft boxes is going to change that. I don't think lowering the print runs a little bit is going to totally change that. I think the damage has been done. And they need to seriously restructure the way that they're doing things. Almost like Flesh and Blood did for 2.0, but... Yeah. It's just they're more stuck in their ways because they've been doing it for 30. And it worked. And you can't, you know, you can't fault something and it for worked. that. You Let's can't, not forget that no, you it can't worked. can't fault them fully for, for that because years. it worked. And that's why... It is our fault because <laughs> we bought Time Spiral at inflated prices during the <laughs> pandemic. We bought these sets. We just kept buying every product and, you know, part of the problem. And then when you make a backhanded comment, and it was Chris Cox who said you don't have to buy every set. Yeah. Like, yeah, thank you. I, I, I had no idea I didn't have to buy every <laughs> set, but I wanted to. And then, like, and now I just don't. I just don't care about Clue Magic. No. At all. You know, I cared about Ixalan, so I, you know, buy some Ixalan. Yeah. But I don't care about Clue Magic, so that's fine. But that's also not good if a huge base of people aren't interested in a product and you printed fucking two million of them. I can say fuck now. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're like past minutes. five minutes. Yeah, I was like, we're, five, we're way past five minutes. We're so way We way can past. say fuck. <laughs> um, but that's what I think they got to do. And then the other... The other, what is it, the elf in the room for the other card game that we should talk about right now? I think that, and if, I don't know. I don't know how the, I don't know how the internet feels about it because the internet seems to half love Flesh and Blood and absolutely hate Flesh and Blood and wish that it died mm -hmm. and is so mad that it's successful. So I don't know what will happen when I say Flesh and Blood is in serious trouble. Yeah. I think that. And I think everyone that likes Flesh and Blood has been playing it for as long as we have will understand where we're coming from. Yes. I hope so. I hope no, we're not. The no, they will. Out. They will. They so, will. It's just how the game works. The game came out to be competitive. Yeah. And it was designed around being played in person, and and it was supposed to be a competitive game from the get go. Tournament structures, everything from from. They from, really from wanted the start. to push that. The problem field. was, where are the pre con CC decks? Why can you only buy Blitz? And see, I don't care. Blitz is more of a TC, a table. You play Blitz more as a tabletop game. The thing is, though, is it's a lie. I know. It, it's it's like, oh, CC's complicated, so you get your feet wet with Blitz, figure out the game, yeah. and then upgrade to CC. So you get a Blitz deck. You get a nice little pre-con, or you build your own little Blitz deck, and you start to figure the game out, and you think you're having fun, you mm -hmm. know, 20 mm -hmm. life, and all this good stuff. And then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm sick of playing, you know, just, you know, little Blitz. The same minutes. characters. So like, yeah. you go to CC. You're going to you upgrade your Blitz deck to CC and you walk into your LGS and you're all excited for your first, compet you know, you know semi-competitive flesh and blood environment and you get obliterated. Demolish. That's what happens every time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happened to us. It happened to it happened. And I feel like having Blitz as like this early this is what you do to get started, get your feet wet kind of thing. I said to you that I hated Blitz right from, I, the from the start. You were like, let's just play at the Blitz decks. And I was like, no, there's no point. I only want to play CC. And that's what we did. And we, we never yeah. really played Blitz because I would I just wouldn't do it. So, it. Which is what they should have done in the beginning, just when you, CC. Yeah, because when you do that, it gives everyone this false impression of the game. And now you have like two formats that are vastly different yeah. in meta. Yep. And and one just it just to me I think Blitz actually hurt the game long term and helped it short term. Yeah, it helped get people into it, but it helped people play it right away. The thing is, the game's designed to be competitive, and that's also as much as because Magic did not have a competitive format for years up when Flesh and Blood came out. So that was like this super cool answer. Yeah, because we've been waiting for a competitive format. But the thing Magic is. Stopped. The thing is, is that most players for everything, most players in every game, whether it's a card game, a tabletop game, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, video games, mm -hmm. most people are casuals. Yeah. 
Most people aren't playing 12 hours of Fortnite no. or whatever a day. We're not going to their local LGS every, every week, every week, twice a week, twice a week. You know, they're not doing that. They're just, so the reality is, is that most people, most of your market is casuals and collectors. Yeah. And a neat, a niche of it is competitive. And in flesh and blood's case, a large niche of it is competitive, competitive. but you are turning off Everyone else that wants to just have fun and just play. At and the I kind of really felt that, like, you know, my one buddy, we brought him to the LGS. Mm -hmm. We showed him how to play Flesh and Blood. He's a little overwhelmed, but he picked it up quick because yeah, he has he, a lot of experience with card player. You know, yeah, he knows. Like, word games and all that. So he's got the mind for it. So he picked up the game and the rules pretty quickly. But there's just, like, with Flesh and Blood, you have to know all the cards yeah, and how and everything the fact works. That if you don't use every card in your hand, it's like you, you messed up. It's yeah. It's like, and if you don't, and it takes weeks and months of dedication to learn all of this. Yeah. So I 100% see why you got turned off, in my opinion, from Flesh yeah. and Blood. Because it's it's so thick, and you're just trying to figure out the game and have fun. And you go to a draft event, and everyone's already min-maxing a box that just came out. And it's just like, all right. Like, that's what made <laughs> me, like, I played World of Warcraft for years. Yeah. And when World of Warcraft first came out, there was so much mystery behind the game. You weren't sure what was the best, and things weren't all documented. The best there was was this website called ThoughtBot. If you guys are old enough to remember that, it just had all the and it had like and whatnot. it had like info, and people would add to it, and, and and it was this. But you had to like search for everything, so you had to mm -hmm. kind of know what you're looking for, like search a quest, and then like you know break it all down. But now there's like established meta. And like wow, like if you if you don't have X Y Z equipment, X Y Z competitive side of things, and it's just basically like if you don't have the best of the best, and you don't get picked, and it made the game so cutthroat that it, it loses that charm, it loses that mystery, and now you're just having to play the meta. Like you can't play an arcane mage because they suck, or fire mage. You can't play fire mage because they <sighs> suck. What... So you have to play a frost mage, or you have to play an arcane mage, but what if you wanted to play a fire mage? Yeah. Like, that's what you wanted to enjoy. You like that ability. And just because it does 2,000 less damage per second or something, you know, a small amount, like, you know, we're talking percentages off the, the meta, yeah. you won't get picked, because that extra 3% extra damage well, that arcane does quicker, by, by, by a tenth of a second. So, that mentality gets, is super, I think, prevalent in Flesh and Blood. Which... I think they probably did anticipate it's just And no they did and they tried to correct it, it with Living, Living Legend. They tried to make it so it rotates out and the meta changes consistently. It had, it had and the changed. meta does change, but here's the thing. These competitive players, they will buy a five hundred dollar deck and then when that led that 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 hero goes into Living Legend, yeah. they'll buy another five hundred dollar deck. So they're already committed. And they will always outpace a casual. When we played Magic, there was people who were way more into it than we were. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. every week. They're a couple times a week. They actually just hang out at the store all day. Yeah. Like, there are people who who know every card ever printed. But you could beat them. Yeah. You could beat them. Whether it was the RNG that is inherent in Magic or, you know, you just... Like, do you remember the Challenger decks? Yeah. Oh, I, that won my, mono, I, won, I won my first dude, tournament that mono with the Challenger deck. red Challenger deck. You didn't change a <laughs> card out of that deck. Came out, won the first tournament I ever played. And you were beating people who built their own decks oh, and yeah. just this and that and put so much time. But you Thunder. just, because you beat it with the pre-con yeah. basically. Not pre-con, I mean, it was a deck that someone else made and then they just was, basically made it. But, exactly. But, but, stands to reason, that deck cost for 35 bucks, yeah. I think. And I won a tournament with it. Made my money back almost. Pretty much. No, I did because and I opened up a Crucible of Worlds and it was a foil. Flesh and Blood it's doesn't phenomenal. have... They don't have pre-con CC. So the Which only, is really hurting it. I so see what you're saying. So the only way for you to make a CC... Which would also... The, having a pre-con CC would make it easier for kitchen table because then people can just buy pre-con CCs and play at home. And why do you think... Why do you think pre-con commander decks sell like wildfire? Because that's all people want to do. Like, I don't feel the need to upgrade the Warhammer decks. If there were flesh and blood, blood decks, we would probably purchase them. They did come out with, they did come out with that one. No, those are blitz decks, and those are two blitz decks. Really? Yes. That's the closest the, the, they came. The, the Dorinthia and the Brute one. You know what I'm I talking about? I don't think we have it downstairs. Those aren't constructed. We'll have to check it out, but I, I, I'm not I sure. I might be wrong, but if, even if so, they also. That's that's the only thing that's they the ever only, did. That's the and like only thing. 
I see what you're saying. I just, it's it, sad. It, it is. It's a it's huge sad. missed opportunity, and it's alienating casual players. And but that's the problem. See, they can't make the game itself more casual because they'll alienate your your competitive players. And a lot of these guys are whales. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they buy a lot of product. So that's a problem, and that's why I think that. They've had this talk about this PVE format, and I think that's the solution. I really do. I thought the Especially way after I said playing that... sorcery, and how sorcery has a lot of PVE elements in it. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and like you said about having like a boss at an LGS. Think about this, you guys. If you're playing Flesh and Blood and you want to go to your game store every week, each game store has an, their own boss that Flesh and Blood gives them that has you have to battle, and maybe you get a huge prize for beating it. But this boss is like you need a team of eight. You guys have to be able to have the best decks you could ever make just to beat this guy in his life. He might have OP abilities that you've never heard of, but it's yeah. because it would be player versus environment. And it would be so be intriguing. Like the LGS is like a raid. And like, no, it would be the Dungeon Master. The LGS is the Dungeon Master. That's where you can incorporate the Dungeons and Dragon and, feel into Flesh and Blood. And that could bring casuals into the game. I would, I would go to try that. Oh, 100%. Because it could be a shorter campaign... Could maybe only be like an hour and a half long, depending be on an how... hour and a half fight or two hour fight, which I think would be so cool. Everyone gets a chance. Yeah, there's so much you can do with PVE, and I mean that is why I'm so into sorcery because the, the environment the, is the game very board and all of that. It's central to this and game, and like you know how we're talking about like the Boulder card, like how it exists. Wildfire, the, like wild, exactly. They're so cool. The bearing effect, you bearing under the ground. That's part of the player versus and, environment. It's a it's see flesh and blood. The problem is that they talked about this PVE format and said, yeah, it might be coming somewhat soon or something mm-hmm. like that. And that was over a year ago. Because I think they were they were really overwhelmed with competitive because it's doing good, and, and that's what they they put their eggs into that basket. But now that's and now that sorcery has come out, and now like sorcery, I think is even better positioned for a PVE like format oh, because yeah. it's just it oh, yeah. works with the board already. There's already 100%. a board, so. Now Flesh and Blood comes out with the PvE format, it's going to be like, is this a response to sorcery? Like, what mm-hmm. is, you know, it would have felt better if the it way the dungeon, ago. The way I'm describing it as a dungeon master with LGS would be different. It would. But... That would be ridiculous. It would, you'd have to have a way for you to play that at home. You'd have to have a way... Well, yeah, you would And ha- you could totally no, do that. No, online! There would be an online character that you have we to beat. We should do that. You would log into your account for Flesh and Blood and put your squad together to face him online type deal. He would have to, like, it would be so cool. Honestly, I would I would like to think about how you would do that. Like, that would be a fun thing to figure out. And, like, EDH is made by fans. So, That's, like, yeah. you know, we could we could make that format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys could make that format. And then Flesh and Blood can take the, the, the commander out and acknowledge it mm-hmm. and be like, okay, you guys really like this format made by fans? Like, all right, we'll, we'll support it. The thing is, the, I don't want to go too much into it because I'm just thinking about it, but like, there would be like innate abilities on that creature you have to fight and maybe he'd get a random turn of what his abilities work for like, if you attack him, then he can roll a dice and he can do a defense move on it. It could be random from his arsenal of defenses. Yeah. You know or, what I mean? And like World of Warcraft raids, like bosses have phases. The monster won't be its own deck. It will be a monster that you have to fail like, to face imagine, that has a bunch of arsenal weapons. Imagine you had a boss or a card, like like we had a hero, and he has like 80 life. Mm-hmm. And then when he gets down to like 60 life, he transforms into another version of the card. Yeah. And then when he gets down to like 30 life, he transforms yeah. into another. And then he gets down to like 10 life. And maybe those forms get more powerful and powerful. That's what I'm saying. And that's how, like, that's how like World of Warcraft and like, you know, any of those games are. Yeah. Raid, you know, raids mm-hmm. work. It's, but that's, I think Flesh and Blood's the only game that could do that because you're your own hero. You have your equipment. You have your, it's an RPG already. Yes. That's it's already ready made. It's already ready it's made. Ready, they ready just made. have to know how to make the dungeon master or the dungeon like the whatever the the person or the creature that needs to be killed is strong enough and works works well with the environment that is flesh and blood on. And here's the other thing. And maybe I should have let off with this because a lot of people might scoff at this conversation like no flesh and blood it's plateauing. And yeah. if it's you don't say that it's plateauing, you're lying to yourself. Oh, I I'm on the I'm on the Discord. I'm on the I'm on multiple Reddit pages for it. That's also you due know, to the Living Legend stuff people, because those people are losing their heroes and like it's people are saying that LGSs 
are having or are stopping doing events or doing less events less people are coming and everyone's argument right now it's it's christmas time it this always happens with flesh and blood during the winter time and it's like that might have been true a year ago might be true two years or whatever i don't think it's true this time i think that all of the people who left Magic to play competitive Flesh and Blood have already done so. I think all the people who wanted to try Flesh and Blood, who had never played a card game or, or, or whatever, yeah. already have. And I don't see them raking in new players on a monthly basis. No. And if stores are starting to slow down, when you combine the fact that like Bright Lights wasn't a great set... And that's also their problem... You're pigeonholed on what you can reprint for people. You're pigeonholed into what a set can have. When a magic set comes out, it has you a theme. Comp, you it comp, has a theme. Yeah, but you can put all those cards together. You can play a five color deck yes, with every one of those or cards. Or it works with your older decks, yeah. or at least some of the cards work with some of the older decks. But if you have cards for Prism, or you have a guardi you know, Guardian or, or yeah. Brute cards, it can only be played with Brute or Guardian. And now they're doing that they're thing. Splitting heroes. Spl uh, yeah. We'll see a Prism Warrior maybe or but something like still, that. It's taking too long. It's taking too long. And it's still somewhat pigeonholed. And it might be unpigeonholed in 10 years. After they have all those cards and everything's going. Yes. I think I, that... And I, I think if the game can survive... Which, which I think, I it, think will. it will. Like, like that's the other thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to label this podcast like Flesh and Blood's dying or something no. because it's not dying, but it's not growing. No. And you can very quickly enter like niche status, and that's fine if that's your goal. And you know, like everyone's losing their mind right now about the One Piece game. Yeah. And like I was telling you before we started this, I. I'm not a hater against it. It looks fun. We haven't personally gotten haven't to play it yet. yet. But long term, I see that game plateauing because right now, you know, there's only so many One Piece fans out there. Yeah. And because there's only so many One Piece fans, the game will not appeal to people who aren't One Piece fans. I, I, I don't care what people are saying. Even if it's a fun game. Yeah. Maybe a small minority of never, people. If you've never heard of One Piece or have read it or seen it you're probably not going to care there, about the game. there will be some people very few though yeah and they'll, they'll but be... if you are interested in any of that you're already a fan you probably have already been playing it or or, or, or or yeah. yeah or at least collecting it or yeah. something so you have like this kind of limited scope even if it is large one piece is freaking huge it's sold over 550 million copies so it has enough where it doesn't really need anybody but... new the thing is, is that every card has to exist in the One Piece universe, which, which eventually is, you kind of get into like Pokemon syndrome. Like, it's like the Charizard. You can't print Charizard in every set or it wouldn't be worth as much. No, and you can only really have so many special Charizards. And Pokemon, yeah. I think, has done a really good job at having like, you know, they only have, a, I don't know, it's like 1,200 Pokemon or I forget what it's at now. but By 1,100 or something. But... Which is insane. There's a solid amount, but they've done a good job at balancing what gets reprinted. You know, how often a card shows up. And it works. Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't know if, I don't know if One Piece is going to be able to do that because it's, there's only so many times you can reprint Luffy. There's only so many times you can reprint some of the villains yeah. or, or whatever have you, or the items, mm -hmm. you know, Demon's Fruit or whatever it is. Yep. Yeah. You know, there's only so much you can do with that. So eventually, you're going to start to plateau, and that's fine because, just like Dragon Ball, yeah, you can only reprint them with so many times. Yeah, the same. and and they do it a lot. I mean, there's a thousand Goku cards, and Disney but, Lorcan is also going to be in the same pigeonhole spot. But the thing is, is like it's okay because the company that runs Dragon Ball, they don't need to make money and just be purely profitable, and their, their entire the revenue game. is due to uh, the, the card, card game. game. Yeah, it's an extra product. That makes them some money. Mm -hmm. That it contributes to all of their other products, which also make them money. Whereas Flesh and Blood, for example, Can that's do all LSS. That's all LSS does. Yeah. You know, right now, Sorcery. I, I don't know what the company name, honestly. Eric. Yeah, Eric Carosa. <laughs> yeah. You know, right now, his only thing is, li <laughs> and he actually he worked on Path of Exile. Really? I think he was the game director for Path of Exile, really? which actually makes so much sense about the game. But anyway, the thing is, is that those games aren't pigeonholed. Magic, Flesh and Blood, Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. Sorcery, they're not pigeonholed no, because no. it's, like, Yu-Gi-Oh, 
they make cards and then they take the cards and turn them into the anime or, or the, the manga, manga whatever so or whatever they i don't even do they still have the manga? they have definitely a manga. i think so they definitely have a manga. but they take the cards and turn that into the story yeah magic they don't have like a tv show or anything they have to abide by so and they have this universe is beyond and they, you know which is weird it's like really yeah it. it's a you didn't need to do that because you already had freedom yeah like sorcery Anything, you know, they, they their limit is their imagination. Mm -hmm. But One Piece is totally limited to the source material. Yeah. And so it's the Dragon Ball game. But the Dragon Ball game has a crazy following. Like, yeah. it's not explosive. No. But these people show up every t every week. They, they buy all the and sets. And that's what One Piece is going to be the exact and same thing. And I think thing. that in three to five years, It'll be the, exact the hype will thing. die down and One Piece will be the same thing. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with oh, that. Oh, that's what I'm saying. When we went to Alternate Universe... There's a ton of people playing Dragon One Ball. Piece. Or, yeah. And what? I was actually impressed how quickly One Piece is ripping. Which is insane. Which, Faster than any other game I think we've seen. And that's... Excuse me. That's also, I think, a little concerning. Because, yeah. you know, Wildfire strikes and it goes out just as fast. Yeah. I, but it's just the, the backbone of One Piece is just too grand. And that's why I think it's going to be successful. It's just as famous as Dragon Ball. And you I, know what I mean? It's up there with that. Like Dragon Ball and Yu-Gi-Oh. We're talking about the big it's a three. Good, like... And it's a good game. So it has yeah. that going for it. People and are enjoying it. In my it. opinion, from what I've seen about One Piece game, it's way less convoluted than Dragon Ball's game is. Which maybe we have to try it then. I, would, I do want to try it. Just, we just haven't gotten around to it. we have the one pre to, You know, we have sorcery and flesh and, they and blood, have full magic. Pre and there you go. One Piece came out with pre-con decks that were for the game, not a Blitz version of it. That helps them in the long run, having pre-con decks no that are There is no different versions of the game. It's like, yeah. this is the deck. This is your deck. Soup this deck up and then go out there. Why did Flesh... Nah, you're right. Every time Flesh and Blood did that, it really hurt them. They should have just stuck, stuck with... This is CC. Or just Flesh and Blood is 60-card deck. Here's the thing, and this is what I think Flesh and Blood envisioned. That you buy a Blitz deck... And because they don't have pre-con CC decks, you have to buy booster packs. To make which, them into... And then you have to do it yourself. And, and they wanted to drive... I think I think that LSS has nothing but good intentions. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that, that I don't think that they're stupid. I don't think that they're, you know, they're, they're trying to do anything below the belt. I think that LSS is genuinely trying to make the best card game they mm -hmm. can. And I think that their, their initial desire to appeal to the competitive scene... More specifically, in the short term was awesome, but in the real long term, and maybe even the moderate term, it was good, because it survived where ninety nine percent of card games don't. Oh yeah. But the thing is, is now we're entering year what four, five, four or five. You know, nineteen, I think it came out. When these, when this is three or more 19? years down the line, like not having that casual, that yeah, and scaring them off and motivating them to be afraid of. CC mm -hmm. or committing and and see, I mean we haven't even touched on, and I mean we have like thousands of dollars just like in cards in in flesh and blood cards and I yeah. love our collection and I'm happy they but, haven't really gone down in value. But so I'm, my, I'm all about you know, that and I, I'm so thankful for being in early and being able to get alpha beta cards and things like that, yeah. cold foils and 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 first edition boxes that we've held on to. So like that stuff is so cool. But the elephant. The other L, there's like five elephants in this podcast. The, but listen, listen. Yeah, I'm listening. Listen. The generic equipment cards and like uh, Light and Strike and Command and Conquer and Art of War, they're, they're power they're, nine. They need to be banned. They're power nine. And they, I mean, they are still in decks. They're still, they cost not, too much money. Starting to not be in as many. Certain decks don't need Light and Strike. Certain decks don't need Art of War. And that's that's fine. But like every deck's gonna benefit from Heart of um, Heart of Fundel's Tunic. Yeah, which and it's just not good because as a new player, you go and you're like, I, I can't compete with Fendel's Tunic. And people are like, oh, there's other cards that are, you know, relatively close. And it's like, yeah, but it's not. It's not that every three turns I get a free mana. If I'm gonna be honest, Fendel's Tunic is the one card that should be overprinted to oblivion to give everybody a chance to get it. I agree. 100%. Because it is the Black Lotus of Flesh and Blood. It makes mana for you. I, I, it's pretty close. I mean, Heart of Fundel, uh, or yeah, the Heart of Fundel. Gives you life. He gives you life. And this it goes back into your deck when you pitch it. You it's don't have to cool. destroy it. But, okay, 
Or, see, this we're still new. I think Flindel's Tunic won't be as big of a deal as once there's more cards that can just destroy equipments on the, on the, on the jump. Yes, but no, because you said it before we started this, and it's they're watering down the cards. They will yeah, never. I guess you're right. They will see they're screwed. They will if never. They kept on making the power level like it, it would. They would have cards that could destroy that. They would. But they will never make a generic as powerful as Con Command and Conquer, Conquer or Out of War again. No, they don't want that. They'll make. They'll make class specific cards that are strong like that. Yeah. But they'll never make card and see and that's just like Which I want more the game of the strength, generic. Yeah. The game strength is once again hurting itself. Yeah. The strength of you have these generic cards that apply to all and I don't I can invest one time. I can buy a playset at Command and Conquer and use them in all my decks forever. That's cool. That's my, that's but my at the same part. time, it also can kind of hurt you because those cards are insanely powerful. So what are you going to do? Make more cards that are just that powerful and just have a whole bunch of these ridiculously powerful cards, which then kind of defeats the purpose? Or, like... Get rid of it and just keep on going the route you're going now. And if they reprint it to Oblivion, then you're going to have all the deck... Like, then if everybody could have those cards in their decks, then everybody will. Yeah. So you have to... I, I think they have to ban them. And, yeah. and and they really, I mean, Flandell's you know, tunic should be the number one ban. They banned minnowism, yeah, and that whole loop with that, with like five, with getting the land back, yeah. and being able to just get, get literally pitch, just yeah. take land, get pitch, pitch. But, um, no, I'm pretty sure you could take a blue from your deck, right, and then use pitch. that. As, yeah, which yeah, man, playing too much man, even playing too much magic and sorcery. Um, All works the same though. But see, resources. Yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. So they do ban cards. They, you know, flesh and blood is bland. Plenty, plenty of cards. And some of them are embarrassing. Like the one sword that yeah. got banned, or like before, before it, it came, came out. out. Like, how does that leave the play testing? You know what I mean? But my thing with with flesh and blood that has me less worried than like with Watsi, for example, is they're smaller, yeah. so they can move. More agile. In different directions. More Without quickly. having to worry about backlash or from just like being halted from... Or just because we already sent an order to cart or to our printer and, and now they have to... They, like, we can't stop it. We, you know, we've ordered a two million boxes. We can't... They, they've already started. Like, it's not as bad like yeah, that. So saying. they're more agile in terms of business decisions. And they've they've shown to change on their own. And that's what I mean. More than Watson's Flesh and Blood 2.0. If that didn't happen, I don't think Flesh and Blood... No, they would have already failed. So they are, they've shown that they adapt. Yep. I think that, I think that I'm picking up and I think some of the other people who are worried about what I'm worried about, cause I'm not alone. Um, I'm not like, you know, some the only person yeah. seeing this, but I don't think it's mainstream yet. The concerns. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think everybody's feeling that. And I think everybody doesn't want to, I think that everyone who loves flesh and blood, cause we love flesh and blood. Yep. But I think that everyone who loves flesh and blood doesn't want there to be a problem. No, I agree. I completely you know, agree. Kind of like stay together but, for the kids. So this is the this is the thing I'm thinking about. Just like Magic and every other game, I played Magic for a long time in the beginning, and then I quit for five to six years. Then I played Magic again for a good three to four years, and then I quit for another four to five years. We've been playing flesh and blood for about four years now. There's a chance that we stop playing it for three years now, and if the game is still going strong, we come on back in three years from now. And it's a whole new ball 100%. game. 100%. But the thing is, is that the only reason we stopped playing Magic, and yeah, like you went to college and things There's like that. There's always things but, that slow down. But for the that. most part, you didn't like, we lost interest yeah. in what they were doing. When Ravnica, we quit for, what is that, year and a half? We came, we came, Two years. The Guilds of Ravnica, whatever, Ravnica Allegiance. We, yeah, we stopped playing. Allegiance, we, we stopped playing yeah. at that. We that bought was, that. The, the, the blue box. The blue box. Yeah. And uh, it's crappy. It's crappy. It's very lackluster, that's especially kind of, after the high. Like Guilds of Ravnica, I have such a soft spot for. It was just such a fun set. And then, Risk factor and just like, dude, there's so many good cards. But in that we set. quit after that for yeah. a good two years because Allegiance just felt like what the it was hell is this? Trash. This is actually. But what, bad. That's what I'm saying. Flesh and Blood's feeling that same way right now. And they have, but see. And they're different card games, so they both have their own unique problems. But I think mm -hmm. that Flesh and Blood's problems are scarier 
Yeah. I think that I think the LSS is more equipped and, 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 and is more willing to make changes, but I think the changes they have to make are harder. Are harder. Yeah. Because like you said, pigeonholed with heroes. I mean, the new box that's coming out, they're gonna have five heroes in it. Six heroes. Or six yeah, six heroes. That's a lot. Yeah. Like how is that going to work? How many cards are going to be in that set? How, like, how is that? Are they going to be different warrior slash brute hero cards? Like, but that looks I, like an attempt to be less pigeonholed. Which I want. Because, so maybe there's a like, character, I, there's a, play, a hero I want to play in this set coming out. gives me, con where where I sit here and I tell everybody that I don't have faith in Watsi, I have faith in LSS. <laughs> Six heroes in a box, you know, there's a solid, there's a good chance you're going to like one of them. Uh, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, like, you look at, like, Tales of Aria. Mm -hmm. There's three heroes in it. You know, Monarch, three heroes in it. Like, if you didn't like those three heroes, then what am I doing? <laughs> so Monarch 4, but yeah. It had Bolin, it had... Well, Monarch, I, I don't care. I think Monarch is such a great set. And it, it the it's hype, so cool. it couldn't live up to the hype. No. You know, very few things. I think GTA 6 is, looks like it's the only thing that will ever live up to its... It does, <laughs> it's look, like it, it does look like... I'm actually intrigued to buy it, but... I hope GTA 6 isn't going to cost $100 and me to pay monthly to play it. No, that's all myths. The game's going to cost $70. Bucks. I'm cool with $70 because that game looks actually worth games $70. Now, first party games now are, you know, the big ticket games, they're going to be $70. Call of Duty, $70. Yeah. You know, Diablo, $70. Diablo is, yeah, and then, like, I think I paid, I paid $60 for Alan Wake 2. Great game. Great game. Isn't that way. older, though? No, Alan Wake 2 just came out, like, back in October. It did? Yeah, the new one. So, like, that was 60 bucks. So there's still games that are $60, but a lot of games are now becoming $70. But the, I'm also thinking this. Aren't these games easier to make now with AI Absolutely and not. technology and Absolutely all this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, you don't think that they're, the dude, technology they have dude, to do these no. games is easier? So, from, like, a tech perspective, games now... See, the problem with games now... And this is, this is, a, this is, a, good, this is a good segue out of everything. Okay. But games now... The problem with them is that they cost so much money to make that Call of Duty can't change massively because it costs so much money to make. And if they make a mistake and they, they piss people off or do something that people don't like and the game flops, mm -hmm. it's a huge, huge, it's devastating to them. Okay, so they're going to play it safe. You have a, if you have a $200 million video game... You're not gonna try and reinvent. You're not gonna try and invent something new. Yeah. You're gonna do, and that's why like games like like I love Assassin's Creed. I love Far Cry, but they're all the same. But I'm okay with that because uh, you know that's too well. Axel Axel worded it best. Our buddy Axel, in his infinite wisdom, mm -hmm. said that you know sometimes I'm just in the mood for a good collectathon, a good open world collectathon. I know I've done it. I did it in Odyssey. I did it in, <laughs> in Black Flag. I go out there but, and like, collect some things. You know, <laughs> I like the Ubisoft formula. Like I enjoy it sometimes. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for it, but that's okay. So, and and that's why no one's really complaining when they do I that. Kind of but do it's play safe. Far Cry Five and go fishing. Honestly. But it's safe. It's safe decisions where you have indie games. These one or two guys, they're trying to make their splash into it. That's where you get these groundbreaking games. That's where you get games. Like, like PUBG that's where you get Fortnite, started off. Battle Royale. That's, you get Apex Legends. You get those things. You get people who take these crazy risks and invent something new. Yeah. So the, the thing that, like, uniquely positions Rockstar, and to answer, more to specifically answer yeah. your question, like, why aren't games easier? To make. Because so much more logic goes into it. Like, AI is not out there writing code, yeah. like, from scratch. Like, you still... Ever, and, and to make these way more complicated systems, wind, fog, rain. I mean, you look... That was never even implemented before You look at the trailer to GTA. It's phenomenal. The, the wires on the telephone poles move, like, individually. Like, that's never been done. That... And, like, someone pointed out that detail. I was like, hey, holy cow, like, I, that's so small, I've never noticed that. The wind's blowing. But you know how much time. code and testing it takes to make those wires move in the wind like that, realistically? And that's just a tiny little sub-feature. Everything, everything that happens in a video game has a line of code or thousands or tens of thousands of lines of code to make it possible. So the more deep that a game gets, the works more complicated it gets and that's why see call of duty activision's breathing down their throat yep. and going you gotta get this out every year go we have investors to answer to rockstar bethesda they're the two best game companies in the world in my opinion because they don't give a fuck <laughs> they don't give a fuck 
<laughs> about time. I mean, GTA 6 has been in development... For 10 plus years. Right after GTA 5 finished. Was released. And then between between 4 and 5 was... Red Dead Redemption. Which was also in development while GTA 5 was in development. Or just released. So you had this game that has literally developed for 6 years. That's what it takes. That is... Like, back in the day, it took a year or two... Or or, or or six, eight months for PlayStation games, Super Nintendo yeah. games. But as they get more complex, more money is spent on them. More, more level of detail, more systems, more mechanics. These things take longer. And you can't belt them out. And when you have a publicly traded video game company like Activision, they have a quota to answer to. They have investors to answer to. Rockstar, they Which don't answer. similar to Watsy and Hasbro. Rockstar answers to nobody. Hmm. They don't care. Rockstar has spent so long making these games the way they do that they'll be done when we're ready. Like, that's the same with Bethesda. Which Skyrim. Is a, which is the old school the new, way of doing things. The new Elder, Elder Scrolls, it will be great. Be, yeah. And Star and Starfield was not my cup of tea. I'm a, I'm a fantasy guy. Starfield's a little... I know, space I, isn't my I favorite don't, thing. And to me, in my opinion, space isn't that exciting. There's a lot of emptiness in between yeah. those planets, man. But anyway, it's still a good game. It's a great game for people who love space. Mm-hmm. And Starfield was in development for a long ass time, and that's just what it took to do it, and that's what it's going to take to to, to make Elder Scrolls Six, I'm and that's what it's going to take to make GTA Six. It takes six seven years and a budget of a billion dollars to do it correctly. And who even knows when Elder Scrolls Six is coming out? Like, I want to say next two to three years. Yeah, I think we're gonna. I think, I probably, I, I think that they, I think that, and see. The scary thing is, Rockstar said 2025. Mm-hmm. They didn't say when in 2025. It could be January, it could be March, it could be April, it could be it could be December 2025. Yeah. Would you put it almost two years away? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, exactly two years. The thing is, the thing is, is that if you're a game developer right now mm-hmm. and you know your game's two years out, you're going to be scared out of your mind to want to release your game along GTA 5. Yeah. Everybody in the world it's is every up, gamer. Ma- like I'm gonna say it. Like sixty to seventy percent of gamers are gonna be playing, are gonna be playing GTA Five within the six within the first week. Yeah. And so y- you're gonna see like Fortnite, PUBG, Everything. all these games are gonna yeah. drop yeah. when GTA Six comes out. Yeah, which is gonna and it, you know depending on how well they execute and they've learned their lessons from GTA Online. If, if GTA 6 has a, an, an online format that fixes all of the problems, and there's a lot of problems. As much as I enjoy GTA Online, there's a lot of problems. But that was their first foray into online. Mm-hmm. So if they address those problems and they make a banger online experience, I mean, they have support. GTA 6 or 5 has been a huge moneymaker for them oh, yeah. since it's come out. People are still putting oh, money yeah. into it. And then you have the 5M modding community that's huge too. They bought 5M. Rockstar bought a modding company that, you, that yeah, mods their so game. The, like, like the main, like, so yeah, you don't play on the computer. So, Five M mm-hmm. is a modded format of GTA Five, where like people make their own servers, they can script their own things. Gotcha. So people like role play in GTA Five, like they'll role play as a cop oh, yeah. or like something like that. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen videos huge, of that. And stuff. It's amazing. It's, yeah. it's it's great, and some of it's like okay, this is a lot. Like I work for 12, eight hours a day. I don't I'm want not going to go a game. To work. Back to I'm work. not trying to go back to work in the game, but like you know, huge appeal. And Rockstar bought that, bought them basically to bring them in and do God knows what. I can only assume to implement some of those features into the game. Into the game, because they clearly right on an the RP. ground level and, too. And, and GTA Online. For five did not have a built-in RP system. People made it work, and then when it came onto the computer, people were able to actually hack it, and mod it, and do all the stuff. So then it then it really took off. But if you bake that into the game, you bake what all these people are already doing into the game. You let console players, because console players don't have that experience. They don't have access to five. Be cool if they did. But I don't think that Rockstar is going to open the game up to modding. Rockstar doesn't really like that, they, and and I, I get it. They're 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 really tight about their their stuff. But if they can do it themselves, but if they can do it themselves and deliver on what people want themselves, and then it. have people pay for it, they're going to pay for it, and it's going to make a lot of money for a long. If time. that was their monthly charge to have modded game, people would pay for it. Yeah, and that to me, like that is why GTA Six is going to be able to live up to its hype because Rockstar. 
And so will and so will Elder Scrolls in my opinion. Yeah. I don't even I haven't even seen it. I mean, outside of the one picture they had about with it, like a couple like I yeah. don't know if it was this year or the end of last year. Well, they had a picture basically to let you know that it is in fact happening. Yeah, but I think it was just the um they will title release it when they're ready. And they don't care what you think. They don't care what investors say because I think they're both private. Which I mean, is good. I don't know if I, I forget what Rockstar. I guess I don't know if Take Two technically owns them. I believe Take Two technically owns them, or is they're public. I don't, I don't know how. But they're not being forced. To but get they're not. Like no, that. because Rockstar has delivered for uh, forever. For Twenty five years now. First GTA. I mean the the ninety eight. The, the first two GTAs. PlayStation One, right? Well, the first two GTAs were two D, top down, completely different style. Oh yeah, I remember playing them at the arcades. Um. So those don't really count. The 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 GTA craze really started when three came out. Yeah, <laughs> that was the first time you had this 3D world where you could commit so crime. Good. You could run people over. You could do all this stuff that you just really shouldn't do. Oh. And then San and Vice City came out, yep. and then San Andreas made it go nuclear. Okay, so I was on the forefront of three because that's what I played in the beginning. Yeah, for most people and for all intents and purposes, GTA really, three. GTA is three the is the original first GTA. I mean, GTA 1, 2, and then there was, like, GTA 1968 London, yeah. 1961 London. Like, they were they were criminal askew games mm-hmm. that leveraged what they had. I, I, I don't think GTA 3 would have done well on the PlayStation. It couldn't be done on the PlayStation. So, like, as soon as Rockstar was able to go 3D, they did. They did, and they never looked back. And, I mean, GTA 4 debatably has the best story out of all the GTA games. I personally really like 5, but Nico Bellic is the coolest character of all the GTA uh, number four in my opinion yeah um i think the world in gta 5 is so much better like liberty city it's just gray and when you go back and play gta 4 it just feels really gray but it's also um it's a great story and it's, gta 5 is in new york right no gta 5 is in california no you had it mixed up gta 4 is in liberty city is new york city that's the best one and 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 and, and Los Santos and San Andreas is, is California. Five. And 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 so and my, and and Vice City yeah. is Miami and GTA six is Vice City, which and is gonna be three crazy. was three was Liberty City. Liberty City. It went, yeah. went back to New York. Started in New York. Four went back to New York. Yeah. So like there's only been three real unique locations, which is fine. Um we're going back to Miami, baby. I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But I honestly like I know I just <laughs> talked about it for like another five or ten minutes, but my thing is is like I don't really want to talk too much about GTA 6 because it just hurts me so bad. Yeah, knowing it, could be two years, it could be two years away. It's just, yeah. Um, could be a full two years away. Ah, I think we covered. Yeah. I think we covered a good bit. I think it's been fun here today, guys. <laughs> I feel like we're I, wrapping I up a this. Blues Clues episode. Hey, dude, I'm cool. If I, I learned a lot I need today. to crack another drink, so. Um, yeah, let's put a bow on this. He already said it. If you guys like it, like and subscribe. It, it really does help. It makes it feel like we're not totally wasting our time. But you know what? Even if we are, I this just is like fun. I just it's fun. It's always fun. If there's something you guys want to talk about, if you guys you know want to bring you know, let us know in the comments below. Yeah, whatever. You know, if there's any feedback. topics you want us to cover feedback. for sure. That's, feedback. Yeah. Any movies, TV shows that you're interested in? Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla minus one's the best. Go see it. I'm just gonna say that right now. It's amazing. Better than Oppenheimer. I said it now. I don't like that. All right, let's shut it down. Let's shut it down. We're out of here. Shut it down.